Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marissa Laughlin. I'm a holistic nutritionist and I love to talk about all things health and wellness. And today, I figured it'd be the perfect day to film a day in the life on a Saturday. Now, this would typically not be a regular day in the life because I am still working today to catch up from some time I missed this past week. I was off sick. Um, but I still have a lot of time in my day to just prep for it next week and that is truly how I spend most of my weekend is just getting organized, whether it's cleaning the house, doing laundry, uh, meal prepping so that my week ahead is less stressful when I am in full work mode. So I figured I would take the time to film with you today and just share a little insight as to what my life looks like on the weekends. So I'm just finishing up my delicious go-to summer breakfast. I make this pretty much every morning in the summer because it's quick, it's easy, it tastes good, and it's very filling with the Greek yogurt. It keeps me feeling like satiated um, and keeps my blood sugars balanced. So this is my like go-to breakfast every day. Um, I will leave the ingredients in the description below for you if you want to build it yourself, but I just find it to be so quick and easy this time of year. Um, as you can see, I'm also sitting outside. I think getting outside has like been such a game changer for helping with so many areas in my life. First of all, one thing that's really, really important in your wellness journey is making sure that your circadian rhythm is in check, meaning your sleep-wake cycle is regulated. Um, it can help improve sleep, it can help with your energy levels during the day, and the way in which you do that is regulate your sleep and wake time, and then also like getting out in the sun in the morning, that way your body knows it's daytime, you're starting to produce more cortisol, um, and you're set for the day. And then in the opposite end of that is a bedtime routine, which I'm not necessarily going to talk about in today's video, but having some things in place to just kind of down regulate those daily hormones and start to upregulate the sleep hormones like melatonin. So anyways, that's a story for another time. But um, one thing I try to make a point of every day in the morning is just to get outside, get some sunshine in my eyes and really start my day. So while I'm out here eating my breakfast, I've also made a to do list for today. And I figured I would take you through it before this video so you can see what you're getting yourself into by watching. So um, this is not in, in any particular order. It's just things that I really want to get done today or need to get done today. Um, so first and foremost is laundry. Lots of laundry to catch up on, but also I was sick last week. So I just feel like, you know, washing the bed sheets, all of those things need to be uh, replenished quicker than normal. Um, just cause I feel like after being sick, you just want all of the bedding and, um, and blankets you had just like germ free, you know? Um, also on my list, I need to make a master list of ingredients that we have in the house. Shay and I have been having a lot of conversations about how much money we spent on groceries and how we can um, potentially cut that down a little bit, which is very hard um, with somebody who is celiac. It's just naturally, I always pay more money for things that are gluten-free. It's never not been an inflation compared to regular products. Um, but also we just eat a very specific way. We eat a lot of chicken. We eat a lot of um, veggies. We don't eat a lot of junk. So we just, it's really hard to cut down on a food budget when there's not really like wasteful things you're buying, you know? The only thing I will say is we tend to just buy whatever we see versus, you know, really having a plan. So um, we have several things in our freezer that I just wanted to make a list of that I could put into what my meal plan will be for this following week to try to just use some of those things up and maybe cut my grocery bill for the next couple weeks. Um, so that brings me to my next point. I'm also going to be making a meal plan based off that list that I had. And just try to fill in as many ingredients as I can um, to build meals. And then from there, I will then make a grocery list that I need. Okay, next on my list is some school-related items. Um, I just wrote down finished module 14 for school. But another thing I'm going to add here is make progress on my written exam. Um, so as you guys know, I am back in school and I am very, very close to being done, which is super exciting. So I'm just trying to bang out as many modules and little to do things as I possibly can. Um, the last three weeks I've been waiting for test results to come back. Um, basically like the end part of the program, you do a lot of tests on yourself and you act as if you're self is the individual you would be supporting in their health journey. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting those results back because 
something I haven't talked about is I've been going through a couple different health changes, um, some digestion issues, some hormonal issues, and I'm going to save that for another video, but I'm just really interested to see how this program is going to come together and how I can support other people with these types of lab testing, but also just to kind of see like what's going on because throughout my journey as a nutritionist, um, working with a naturopath and like other practitioners, there's a few tests I've never been offered, which is something I think is missing so much in the wellness industry that could benefit so many people. So um, again, that's the story for another time, but I'm just really looking forward to getting those results back. And then once I have those results back, I can move on to the final two modules um, and then my practical exams and case studies. So I'm getting very close and I'm looking forward to just like being done. Um, okay, next on my list is clean dog ears because you're a dog mom and Harper has one really bad ear that's constantly bad. So um, we're cleaning dog ears today. Also, we're going to clean up the garden beds. My garden beds are doing amazing. I will take you on a little tour through the video today on kind of what's updating, what's growing, what's not. And uh, I just need to pick out some leaves because that's gardening. Um, and then also I need to decide on facial dates and room updates. So in my facial room downstairs where I offer holistic facials, we had some water damage come through and we discovered an issue with the window. Um, so that facial room has actually been out of commission for the last month and will probably be out of commission for another month, possibly two months, um, because we're waiting on a window and then we just have to re-drywall and paint and it's just been a huge stress and it kind of sucks being right in the middle of summer probably better than winter definitely better than winter but like just when you don't want to do anything but like enjoy outside and go boating and all that stuff you just have to deal with the shit of like home rentals which whatever i shouldn't complain but you know what i mean anyways um so i just need to decide what the heck i'm gonna do we could move it to another room upstairs um permanently temporarily i'm just trying to navigate that and then again pick some dates for uh, when I can offer facials again. Okay, so I'm going to finish my last few bites of breakfast. I'm going to go make a coffee and then I'm going to go do my skincare morning routine. I haven't done that yet and I will show you what that currently is. It's super minimal, which is great for summer, but I'll take you along for that. And then I'm going to start with the master list of ingredients and then this afternoon when I'm having a lunch break or sitting outside, I can then look at meal planning for the week. So basically that's what this video is going to be about. Um, and We'll see how it goes. So I hope you enjoy what's to come. Coffee is the best. Um, when I was sick, I didn't have coffee for four days and it was hell. So, so happy to be back on the coffee train. Mm. Okay, this morning, I just rinsed my face with water in the shower because I didn't need to wash my face. I only wash my face in the morning if I have either had a super sweaty night um, or I've worn like a really thick hydrating mask or treatment of some sort overnight and then I wash it off. So, um, that's all I use. So in the summer, like I just try to have as simple as I possibly can skincare routine because I don't do a whole lot other than sit outside. So I just want to make sure that I'm really protected while I do that. Um, so I just spray it's a rose water glycerin toner. I just put it on my face because I want it to be a little bit damp before I apply uh, my vitamin C and hyaluronic acid serum. Um, so currently using the three ships, uh, dew drops, vitamin C and hyaluronic acid. I just do two little drops of this and then I mix it with one pump of the now hyaluronic acid. This is one of my favorite hyaluronic acids because it's inexpensive and it works really well. I find hyaluronic acid to be really hydrating but also really plumping for the skin um, and I use it just like as a base every single day whether I wear makeup or not and I just love it. Again, it's very inexpensive and it works really really well for hydrating the skin. I feel like since I was sick my skin's been super dehydrated so as I said the hyaluronic acid is really great for hydrating and soothing the skin. It also helps with the inflammation of the skin. And then I use a vitamin C serum to help with acne scars and hyperpigmentation. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you right now. I am currently using the Three Ships Dew Drop Vitamin C Serum, but I do think the Mad Heavy Vitamin C Serum is more superior um, just based on my preference of consistency and also the results I've seen. I think this is a great product, but I do think the Mad Heavy is just a little tiny bit better. So after I finish this, I will replenish with the Mad Heavy Vitamin C Serum. 
And I use that every single day. Um, it has really helped with hyperpigmentation. Um, I do have a lot of freckles, but I also have a lot of like yellowing spots on my face. Um, so that really helps. And then the final step of my skincare routine in the morning is SPF. There is just no way in heck I will be going any farther into the sun today without adding in some SPF. I think it's the most important piece of any skincare routine and it is the key to healthy skin, whether that looks like anti-aging, reducing wrinkles, reducing hyperpigmentation, whatever it is, SPF is the answer. So I'm currently using the Matte Hippie SPF. I've also been using some of the Andalou BB creams as well. Um, and whatever, whatever one you want to use, I don't care. Just make sure you wear a mineral-based SPF. Don't forget the neck and the ears as well. So that's it. I keep my morning skincare routine pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I do add more actives in the evening. So if you want to see what my current evening skincare routine is, you can go check out my past YouTube videos. I will also leave that link in the description below for you to check out. Um, and I will leave in the description all the products that I use today. And the very last thing I'm going to use before I head out and do that list is deodorant. I'm currently using the Green Beaver Anti Perspirant. Um, I love this. If you've never tried this, first of all, it's so different than any other natural deodorant because it's an antiperspirant, which means it prevents you from sweating. It's a nutrient drying technology. They do not use aluminum, and I just find this to be really, really helpful in the summer time. So you still stay dry, you're not sweating buckets, um, and you also don't stink. So this is my favorite one for the summer, and it is the Green Beaver, but again, it has to be the antiperspirant one. The other ones that are more gel based do does not have the nutrient dry technology, which means you're sweating buckets still. Um, Anyways, that's it. That's my morning skincare routine. Okay, before I go and do my master list, I'm just going to add some oil to my hair and I'm going to let my hair just air dry today. Um, I'm not going anywhere, so I don't need to do it and it just really needs to be as is. I also absolutely hate, 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 hate brushing my hair. So one thing in my routine that I just dread every single day, I hate brushing my hair. So we're just gonna leave this to air dry for the day. Anyways, that's it. I'm gonna let this hair dry and let's go make my master list of ingredients in the house. break I'm just reheating some leftovers that we had last night for dinner which was tacos so I have just some ground beef in taco seasoning and today I'm trying out the Siete grain-free taco shells and these were surprisingly amazing with grain-free things you never know how they're going to hold up in terms of whether they're going to crumble whether they taste like dust um but surprisingly, the Siete shells held up really well once they were warmed up, um, and they also taste amazing. So 
I just have the ground beef in here, adding a little bit of cheese and sour cream. Yes, I am that type of taco girl. And then I'm also going to be adding on my favorite salsa, which is the Que Pasa Chipotle flavor. I love all the Que Pasa ones, but the Chipotle just has a little bit of extra spice, I find. And then as always, I'm going to add a couple greens on top and that's lunch. I'm going to grab a kombucha and then head outside and do my meal plan for the week. about 4 30 um the day flew by so i have not done everything on this list but i figured i would go over like the main parts that i said i would be doing today so first off laundry i got most of it done there's still a few blankets that i want to um get done mainly just the ones like that are on our couch that we have all the time basically for the dogs um so I will probably finish that tomorrow because I've been hanging everything out on the line. So um, I'll probably finish that up tomorrow. But tonight before bed, which is typically like when I put laundry away, I'll usually put a show on and then just sit in my room and put the laundry away. So that still needs to be done, but it won't be done until tonight. Make a master list of ingredients that we have on hand. So I did that and basically what I did was just figure out what proteins, what vegetables, what um, grains and what fruit I had on hand. I don't really need to replenish any type of oils or sauces or anything like that. So I just went through what I had on hand in terms of those categories. Um, and that's honestly how I build all of my meals when I'm meal planning is I see like what I have in those categories, a protein, some type of carbohydrate, some type of veggie and slash or fruit and then I make each meal based on that so I did that and I actually had quite a bit of things on hand thank the lord so I went ahead and did Monday to Thursday I usually only plan Monday to Thursday because those are the four days that I am typically committed to going into the office or I have to teach yoga or something um those are the four days that are mostly busy that I want to plan ahead for my Fridays, I usually work from home, and then Saturday and Sundays, if I have to catch up on work or if Shay and I are going to do something, I just like to have that flexibility on the weekends. So basically, my Monday to Thursday um, is pretty full, and I just plugged in all the ingredients. The only thing I really needed to add to my grocery list for dinners um, was for later on, on Wednesday and Thursday in the week. So yeah, I was able to pretty much fill everything with what I had, which is great. Um, cause there's a couple things that are about to go spoiled in my fridge, like some beets, um, and some broccoli. So I kind of have this planned out so I could use all those things up. Anyways, that's typically how I meal plan. I just really pick those core macronutrients and then build the recipe around them. I do cook with a lot of spices, a lot of herbs that help to keep it, you know, exciting and not boring and eating the same thing all the time. But to be honest, we do eat the same types of foods on a regular basis and we don't get bored of it because we kind of change up how we make it. Anyways, that's all of the meal planning and master list that I need to do today done. And then to make a grocery list for what we need, Shay and I actually have like, I think it's the reminders app. We have like a running tally of what our grocery list is each week. Um, Shay never uses it, but I do. Um, on the list so far, all I have is like bananas, fresh berries. Um, we also need some cream, green beans. I am having such great success growing green beans in my garden. I'm going to take you for a quick little tour in a minute, but I don't know if they're going to be ready by the time we want to have that this week, which is on Thursday. I mean, they might, but if they're not, I'm just going to grab some green beans to have on hand just in case. Um, and then I always buy chicken every single week, even though we have some in the freezer. It's our main protein source. Um, it's so easy and versatile. So 
chicken is on my weekly grocery list as well. That's all that I have on there. I'm sure once I ask Shay what he wants, that list will grow. But as I said, I'm trying to be really diligent with meal planning to help with just reducing waste, being more intentional with the food that we're eating and preparing, um, and cutting the grocery bill down. So that grocery list, I would say is semi done. Uh, finished module 14 for school. I finished module 14, I've started module 15, and I've also been working on like the written exam, which is kind of like an open book exam that I just go through and answer a bunch of questions. Um, and by a bunch, I mean 75 questions. So I just kind of poke away at that as I go through each module as well. So I made a great dent in the schoolwork today, which I feel really good about. Um, clean the dog's ears. I haven't got to that yet. I might get to that after dinner, but if I don't, tomorrow's another day. Clean up gardens. I definitely did not get to that today, but I am still going to take you for a garden tour. It's just going to be a little bit weedy, but I want to show you what I have growing and how well everything is thriving. And then last thing on my list today was to decide on facial dates and room updates. Um, have not made progress on that either today for a few reasons. I'm waiting for Shay to get home to help me decide what the best plan of action is, whether we move the facial room upstairs, whether I continue to do what we're doing temporarily. So I just want his feedback on that. And then in terms of dates, I can solidify those either tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon and then have a little bit more to flush out to my clients later this week. Um, so yeah, I think I got a great chunk of work done today. A lot of it was work work, which was great. And I'm just feeling really, you know, organized for the week to come um, when I do have a plan of groceries, what I need to get, what I already have, and what I'm going to be consuming. It really makes such a difference for every aspect of my life. Okay, before we close off this video, I want to take you out and show you the garden. So let's go do that. So you guys all know that Miss Harper is my garden security and here she is protecting these strawberry plants which I thought she would eat and um, surprisingly enough we caught Huntley out there picking off the strawberries from the plants. So this is what we have hanging around. They still need to ripen up a bit but um, they're doing pretty well in these single pots. We originally had them in our raised bed which I will show you but we had zero success so I wanted to just transfer them to survive as much as possible. So in the first bed here, I am very hopeful that this is celery. That's what I planted and it's kind of what celery leaves look like, but I am not being too hopeful. In the middle row, we have lots of broccoli, nothing flowering yet, but lots of leaves. And then the back row is a bunch of cauliflower, which we are starting to see bloom up. In my second bed, we have lots of kale. I like cut down on planting kale because this grows like a weed. So I have green kale and the black kale. In the middle row, I have lots of beets that are growing. These are so great to plant because they can withstand colder temperatures. So even if you don't pick them through the summer, you can have them through the fall. And then we have lots of carrots that are also starting to sprout up. But don't be fooled because they're very, very small underneath. This is the raised bed that I said we had zero luck in. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with it next year, but definitely rotating the dirt and trying maybe some just easy things to grow. This bed is an absolute mess because a lot of the seeds that sprouted this year were from last year. So I originally only planted three tomato plants, which are what's in these cages, and all of these other things kind of bloomed up around it unexpectedly. Should have been peppers, but turned out to be tomatoes. So this is what I mean by weeding. I'm gonna have to cut down most of these little trees, but underneath all of them, there is some heads of lettuce that did come through. Um, so I'm happy to have at least something else in this bed beside tomatoes. The most successful garden bed that we have growing is this one. So in this row here, we have a ton of zucchini plants and zucchini flowers popping up. As you can see here, we already have some zucchinis growing. I'm sure before I know it, they're going to be full grown and going crazy. But I love zucchini and I love baking with them, so I will have lots on hand. And then in the other side of this garden bed, we have cucumbers. These are growing much slowly compared to the zucchini, but I am starting to see a few flowers pop up. I totally forgot to film, but in the middle of the zucchini and cucumbers, we do have a row of beans. You can start to see some of them popping through, um, but they are also growing like weeds, which is great because we have beans on a regular basis. 
and then I also have a massive sunflower. So the saga of the sunflowers, originally we were going to have a whole other garden dedicated specifically to sunflowers, but it didn't quite happen because we had to prioritize redoing our deck. So I have one sunflower that is growing and I guess that's better than none. Okay, now that I've gone through my to-do list and I've showed you the garden, I'm going to close off this video here. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support me on this channel. It means so much to me. Before I go, I want to know, if you started a garden this year, is it thriving or is it dying? Because I'm seeing mixed reviews on social media on what's going on with the weather and the temperature changes and such. So let me know below how your garden is doing. If you guys like this video, be sure to go and give it a thumbs up so that I know that you want to see future videos about days in my life. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. It supports me so much. And also go find me over on social media to see other little moments of my life, including the girls, the garden, Shay, and what's going on at Joanne's place as well. Anyways, thanks again for tuning in for today's video and I'll see you guys in my next one.